What's up guys? Justin here with the sketchpotentials.com. All right, so in this video, I'm excited to talk about Profile Builder 4, one of my favorite extensions for SketchUp that just got updated. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so we've talked about Profile Builder on the channel in the past. It's basically a tool designed to help you create smart profiles. So these profiles can do things like automatically infilling framing, other things like that. So um, there's a lot of cool applications for this tool. Um, if you do want to check out Profile Builder, you can do it at the sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I do receive a commission. Oh, and then one other thing to note is this is a single seat permanent license, meaning it is not a subscription. It's a one time you purchase, you keep type situation, which I think will make a lot of people happy. Okay, and so we'll just kind of take a run through these and I'll give you an idea of what they do, how they work. We may do some follow-up videos for the stuff that people are really excited about in the future. But uh, one of the new features that was added is you can see this new button right here, which is join selected profile members or assemblies. So basically what this does is this allows you to take profile members like these two walls that you've created in Profile Builder. Well, if you select them, then you click on this button right here, it's going to extend them so that they join together. So they don't have to be touching each other or anything like that. It's not just like a merge thing. It's like actually something that'll take those and extend them so they run into each other. So that works also for multiple different objects. So say that I've got these steel pieces right here and I select this. So I'm gonna select all three of them. Then I click on the join selected profile members. Notice how it basically extends out the path that was drawn for these um, till they intersect and it joins the members together. And so this is also gonna work for things like diagonal paths. So say I've got these three right here. What this is gonna do is if I select all of them, it's gonna use the path right here to dictate where those are going to join. So if I select all three of those like this, notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna extend this out and it's gonna cut or trim this one and it's gonna extend this one to match these together. All right, so another cool function that they've added is they've added the ability to um, extend or split your profile members. So what that means is that means if you click on this button right here for extend or split your profile members, notice how if I mouse over these different assemblies that are in here, what this is gonna do is this is going to let me either extend my profile like this by moving my mouse and clicking. I can reduce it by clicking like this, or I can split it. And so when you split it, what you do is you use this like you would be in copy mode or something. You tap the control key and then you activate the tool. Notice what that's gonna do is that's going to allow you to split your object. So notice how I can use this to split an object in here like this um, in order to um, remove material or replace this with another assembly, other things like that. And so let's say for example that you wanted to create a gap in this uh, wall paneling right here. You would just activate this tool Notice how you mouse over it and you need to make sure that you don't have anything selected before you do that or it's gonna work on whatever you had selected. But say that I tap control, click my mouse, and then I typed in a value of 36 inches like this. Well, then I could tap control again to turn this off, type in a value of 48 inches and hit the enter key right here and notice how it's actually going to split or it's going to trim this assembly. This would also work for something like a metal rail or any kind of railings where you can add gaps really quickly using the split and trim function. All right, so another very cool function that I really like um, is we also now have the ability to adjust the height of an object. So let's say I was to place a framed wall on this edge right here. So I've got this framed wall in here. Well, say we wanted to reduce the height of that framed wall. Notice how there's an option over here to do that, but you can click on this button to do it live. So with this assembly, you can click in here and notice how it gives you a vertical view. And then within the vertical view, you can click and drag on the blue and red lines to adjust the height of the assembly. And then once you're done, you can hit the enter key and notice how this has adjusted the height of the assembly without doing any kind of distortion to your members. Now, within my model, because I have a version of this, I would have to go in and click on the button to apply assembly attributes. But notice how I was able to take that wall and stretch it and make it taller, just like this. And so let's say we wanted to do the same thing with this assembly right here. And I'm gonna say no to save that assembly. So I'm just gonna click on this and notice how this is gonna do the same thing, it's going to like live show me the way this updates, which I've never seen anything like this in any software. Um, it's super cool to me, um, the way that this is set up, because you can literally, you can come in here and you can make this a wall panel, you can make it a short railing, whatever you want. Notice how this is just adjusting 
automatically. So one change I am massively excited about is you can now live adjust the placement point of assemblies for profile build. Notice how the placement point of these objects is in the middle of the object right here, right? So it's taking this and it's placing it along this path. Well, there's a function in here now called placement point. What placement point does is it actually gives you a two dimensional view of your assembly. And notice how you can actually come in here and you can click in order to place that placement point. So in this case, I want these to be placed with the rear of the object along that path. So if I click on this, notice how it adjusts this so that on the vertical axis right here, this is now aligned to the left of it. Well, if I hit the enter key, and then now if I click in here and select this and update it and pay attention to what happens when I do this, notice how that placement point has been adjusted in here. So previously you had to go through a lot of pain and suffering to change the placement point of those objects, but now you can just come in here and you can just click, hit the enter key. And then when I update my assembly right here, notice how now it's placing it on the front side of the assembly. So that by itself is a massive, massive upgrade for this new version. And so now let's talk about some improvements they made to the whole tool. So if you remember, there's a tool in here that allows you to punch holes in your objects. Well, this has been improved where you can come in here and you can remove holes like this. You can also add holes, but you've got the ability now to move them and copy them. So, for example, let's say that I wanted to place a hole in this wall. We're gonna go ahead and place it right here. Well, notice how right now, if I move around, I would have to click and click and click in order to cut openings. But if I use the move function that's in here, I can take this and I can move it. And notice how when I move it, all the inferencing still works, which is massive. Um, sometimes extensions like remove the inferencing and in some of their tools, this doesn't do that. But if I tap the control key, this goes into copy mode the same way that the move tool does. And not only can you click like this, if you wanna do an array, so if I type in star five and hit the enter key, notice how that's gonna come in here and that's going to create five copies equally spaced. And then if you ever wanna adjust that, you can just uh, try it again. So in this case, maybe I, if I do a divided by three or divided by four, like this, it's going to cut those openings. So you can also adjust those openings. So let's say I was to come in here and select a couple of these. So I'm just gonna select these three just by doing a shift click right here. But let's say I wanted these to be shorter. Say I wanted these to be two feet right here. I can adjust this to be two feet high, and then I can click on the option to apply attributes to selected holes. And what that's gonna do is that's going to adjust all of those holes inside of your wall. So very powerful from that standpoint. Um, one good application for this is if you wanted to, you could use this, and we'll go ahead and get rid of this right here, but you could use this by placing with the, t um, with the bottom middle. You could set this to be like a door size. So say that I wanted this to be three feet wide right here. Notice how I could use this to cut openings for doors in these assemblies. And you can use this to cut holes across any of the assemblies that you create with Profile Builder. Now I am hopeful at some point this can get combined with the assembly function or with some kind of a place object function. So it'd be cool if you could link these holes to an object, right? So you could link the size of the hole with an object in here. You can't do that right now, but I'm just thinking in the future, it'd be really cool to be able to link an object to that so that it would actually like put something in the opening as well. But in the meantime, the hole cutting function got even better and I think it works really great. And so another thing that you can do now is right now, if you work with an assembly, so let's open up the assembly dialog right here. We're gonna select this assembly. So if you come in here and you make changes to this, so say for example, I adjusted this bottom rail. So the up down offset wasn't what it currently is. So let's say I was to make this a little bit taller first. So we're gonna come in here. We're just gonna drag this up in order to make it taller. Uh, I'll go ahead and set this to be kind of centered in here. I'm going to hit the enter key and we'll go ahead and adjust this in here. And so say that you were to come in here and make an adjustment to this profile, right? So say that I was to type in like a value of three feet or something like that. You can hit the tab key and you can see it adjust over here. But what you would have to do is click on this button right here to apply the attributes to this object. Well, if you right click on a profile builder assembly now and click on the option to live edit assembly. So we're just going to set this to live edit mode. Well, notice how now those changes are happening automatically. 
So if I duplicate this and say that we were going to create a relative offset copy right here, notice how I can just come in here and I can make adjustments and those are gonna happen live to this assembly in real time. So you could do that with the components. So say I wanted to adjust the spacing, notice how that spacing is actually getting adjusted in your scene right here. And so that actually is really great because you're not relying on this preview pane anymore. You can actually see what your changes are doing live in your model. Okay, so next up is an interesting one to me, and I guess I didn't really think about it, but it makes a lot of sense. So a lot of the time, if you're dealing with assemblies, what they're doing is they're just kind of like live filling in the gaps. And actually, before we do that, um, something that uh, wasn't even on my list to talk about, I love this new feature where it shows you a cut through of your assembly. So what it does is it takes a cut through and basically shows it to you as like a as like an icon in here. So whenever you activate the tool inside of assembly mode, notice how you can see that outline of that shape. Uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about, but I do love that addition. But if we come in here and we add this bench, right here, notice what it's doing is it's kind of like, it's, it's live setting the spacing between the legs. So it's basically spacing things from the start to the end, and then it's dividing this into a certain number of objects based on a fixed length, right? And if you go over that fixed length, notice how it adds or removes an object in here like this. And that's great for a lot of things. Like if you're going to custom build this bench or something like this, but if you were going to build a bench and the pieces came in like four feet, four foot increments, for example. Um, so we've got our spacing set to four feet, but say this was an assembly that came in four foot increments. What you could do is you can set your snap length. And so when you set your snap length, I'm going to type this in um, to be four feet right here. And I'm going to click on this little lock. Notice how now, when I bring this in, this is only going to snap to four foot increments. And so if you have something that comes in fixed increments like this, that's actually a really helpful function. Um, so if you had like fixed railing pieces or something like that, um, that only come in a certain dimension, you could set your snap length to that certain dimension. And so currently this is just kind of fixed, right? With this assembly, like you've created it, you can't really do anything with it, but with this new version, you can right click and you can go in here and click on the option for add points to path. And notice how I can mouse over this and it's gonna give me a direction, but I can take that and I can then continue an assembly like this. So if I wanted to continue this assembly the other way, what I could do is the same thing, right? So add points to path, find this point, and then move your mouse and click. Now this one gets a little bit funky around the corners, which is fine, because um, this is really an add points to path thing that I'm talking about. But being able to add those additional points and extend those members is extremely valuable. And then from a trim standpoint, um, he's added the, Dale's added the ability to actually trim an object across two faces. And so this is especially helpful for like structural members, things like that, where if I was to um, come over here and select the option for uh, trim to face tool right here. And so what you do is you do a click, but then you'll do a shift click to select a second face. And notice how you can actually set the direction that it's gonna trim it. So if I was to click on this direction, for example, it would trim it on that back side, which is not what we want. But if I was to do it the other way and click on this side, notice how it's gonna come through and it's gonna trim this based on those two faces right here. So this is actually really powerful for trimming objects that run into more complex shapes. All right, and then one of my favorite new features is he's added the ability to add randomization to objects. Um, and specifically right now, this is randomization of um, just the uh, scale of an object. So if I was to take this tree right here and place it, notice how what he's done is he's given us an option if we were to select this assembly and then go look at the components in here, there's an option for a scale min max. I would like to be able to do this in different directions instead of just a global, but I still like this because what this does is this gives me the ability, let's say I wanted this to have the possibility of being even bigger or smaller, right? I could do a 0.5 to a two, whatever. Well, if I run this, notice it's going to come in here and it's going to randomly scale those objects. 
And so he's also added a tool in here um, to set the way the junctions are set up when you create an object. So right now, if I was to select all of these, they're not really a continuous path. And so if I was to extrude this along here, notice how you get some kind of like interesting results where like some of this is grouped and some of it isn't grouped and you've got individual things in here and it's just not a necessarily an ideal result. But if you take this option right here for no junctions and then you apply this, Right here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create every one of these as an individual object in here. And so this actually has kind of a cool application because if you come in here and you select all of these and you run the trim function, you can pick an object and notice how it has all of them selected. So you could use this to trim back each one of these objects. Um, and they're all individual objects, so you can use it to create results like this one. So super cool application if you are creating any kind of things along paths like this. So there's a lot of new features contained inside this new version. I'm excited to try some of them out, but I'd love to hear from you. Which ones did you like to see tutorials on? What do you think is interesting? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.